Next. Bands of marriage. I hereby publish the bands of marriage between uh, Jabulani Moyo, a widower from number four, friendly clothes, four winds, Bulawayo, and spinster Enya Chisale from E224, Njube, Bulawayo. If you know of them and you know of any legal reasons why these two may not be joined together in holy matrimony, please say so now or forever hold your peace. This is the second reading. They are both not here. They have gone across. There's a church called Sobon Park there. That's where the men come from. So next week they are here. We'll pray for them. This wedding takes place on the 1st of April by the foyer. They've chosen the foyer as their place to get married. You are all invited for the ceremony. But for the reception, only those that receive cards. So if I were you, even if you're not invited for the ceremony, for the reception, bring your present during the ceremony. present and then bless them. Okay. Enya is a long-serving usher here. So we are very excited. She is the first lady or first couple to use this place since we opened it on the 17th December. Next, Molly's birthday. Molly has been my PA for 17 years. 17 years. She, yeah, she served here, served pastors and so forth. So that's why we decided to do this for her because she turns 50. I know ladies don't want, she doesn't want this number. Don't say I say this, please. But she's just 10, 50. Shh, 5, 0. Don't tell, don't tell anybody. If you see her, just say, how old are you? Uh, please don't mention that 50 there. She won't be happy. She thinks she's 36. Like all ladies. Uh, deception. Mm -hmm. But she's 50. <laughs> all right. Appealing to me. is not here today. Molly has served us, served my kids as they were growing up, taking them from schools, some of the schools here. She's worked hard for, for us here while we traveled different places. So that's why we thought at 50 we must say thank you. Yeah, thank you to her. It is from us. It is from our team, the apostolic team, that she served so much and tirelessly. Mm. Yeah, she had wanted to resign many times. I've told her, no, I will fire you here. You can't resign. No one resigns when you're working for me. It is me who says, go. <laughs> it's very hard to work for, for me. 
very difficult indeed. But there is 17 years, I'm happy for her. My wife is happy for her as well. Our family is happy for her. So we celebrate her. Put your hands together for Molly today. Oh, Pastor Chelis, baby. Suguma Baba Chen. Buya, 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 buya. In case you are here as well, it's your birthday. We would want to celebrate you. Who's turning whatever number? Is it your birthday today? Who? Your wife's birthday? Is she outside? Please call her. Call her. Call her. Come, come, mom. Come right here. Baba Chele, we are building close here. These two, how many years have you been married? 13. One, three. This is our pastor. Pastor Jele is a soul winner. He loves. It's your birthday too. I'm going to talk to you now. Okay. So, what is happening now? Is she taking you out? Or she's broke? It should be a surprise. You think there'll be a surprise? You'll be surprised yourself if you think there'll be a surprise. <laughs> You'll find she says, oh, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> wow. So you're telling how many years? Yeah, me, I mentioned my years, yes, last week. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> 39. Wow. And she, oh, right. 39. And 13 years in marriage. Wow. Put your hands together for Pastor Jelly. I'm going to pray for all this. Baba and Deru, come and join your wife here. Thank you. I hope you're taking her out. Yeah, you must take her out. Wow, this is baby number what? Three. Planning for more? No. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. This is your, how, we are telling what? 28. 20 years. 20. Two zero. Please, church, let's sing just one chorus for all this. Stand up. Let's sing. Let's sing for them. Birthdays mean a lot to people. Yeah, and, and we thank God for that. While we're a big church, it's good to remember people's birthdays. Right. Choir, Gugu, help us. We'll join you. Mm. If you want to hug them, you are hugging them, please do so. May God bless you. God watch over you. While you are standing, I want to thank you for celebrating my birthday yesterday. It was last week, Sunday. Thank you for the presents. Thank you for the gifts. Thank you for the money that I received from all departments here. I look forward to the money in particular because uh, I've been, for the past five years, I've been planting the money on this building. Each time I get it, we put it here. So you know, my birthday is all the money is, I say it long back, don't buy me suits and shirts and just give me money. I will know what to do with the money. Yeah, so it's part of all this year that has come through here. Thank you so much. May God bless you and God watch over your life. All right, there is M Encounter Camp here. Okay, young adults, I think this camp, please take your seats. This camp is this coming Saturday. Correct, this coming Saturday. Yes, do you want to give final? No, it's perfect. All right, it's in Zishavane. My wife is one of the speakers there. All right, Zishavane is camp. Harvest and Campus, Carl is here. Oh, Joy, oh, her. Yes. 
Amen, church. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you, ma'am. So play the video first and then you are playing the video. Let me sit down there. There is a video harvest and campus. Is harvest on campus. We love God, we pray together, and most importantly, we fulfill the Great Commission. Indeed, we are saviors of men. You know, it's always a vibe when we link up. And best believe, we enjoy every single moment of our service of God together. We live our lives to the fullest as we continue chasing after the heart of the Father. We are a family and we help each other navigate and get through this life thing together. We celebrate each other, we stand together, and we help each other achieve our God-fulfilled purpose and destiny on this earth. So when we aren't at school or doing life together in the middle of the week, this is where you can find us. Join us every Sunday from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. at Harvest House International Conference Center based in Southern Brook, located just behind Fezag. Do join us and be blessed. It's a place you won't want to miss. But hey, don't take my word for it. Let's hear what the other people have to say. They may be able to convince you just a bit more. I'm a harvester. Of course I'm on fire for God. Of course I'm a harvester. Every time when the bishops are speaking in the valley, as my true translators would be. I'm a harvester, of course. I check up on my brothers and sisters. Why are you not in church? I'm a harvester. Of course I check in at two and check out at three. I'm a harvester. Of course I look forward to the snacks. I'm a harvester. Of course I cry during praise and worship. I'm a harvester. Of course I love to usher people into the presence. I'm a harvester. Of course I dance every Sunday. Amen, church. So Harvest on Campus is a group of young, vibrant youth who are on fire for God. Amen. So if you know anyone who is in Teshari, be it UPH, be it Mpilo, be it NAST, Hillside College, we meet every Thursday for those who are not at Mpilo. We meet every Thursday, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. here on at church. And then for Mpilo guys, they meet on Wednesdays from 6 to 8 at the Nurses Lounge. So Harvest on Campus is a great ministry for young people. Tell your relatives to come and join us. Let them rub on the anointing. Because Harvest on Campus is on fire and we are the light and we are in the supernatural. Amen. Thank you. Wow, beautiful. I like it. Uh, so to raise funds towards the proceeds of the things that we do, Harvest on Campus usually has a bake sale after the service, so we'll be selling drinks for a dollar for two. Next. We'll be also selling jumbo chocolate chip muffins for a dollar, as well as white chocolate and chocolate marble glazed donuts at the back, just there where that white desk is, only for a dollar. This goes towards us and basically funding the ministry and allowing us to be able to impact the lives of other young men and young women. So even if you don't want a donut, just buy one anyway because it's for a good cause. But if you have a sweet tooth, it's a win-win. Thank you. Amen. Wow. Any yep. is uh, more? All right, I'll be brief. Uh, we are starting early morning prayers from tomorrow. So please uh, join us. It will be live on Facebook. We'll send uh, the link into the church WhatsApp groups. Just by show of hands, how many of us are part of the church WhatsApp group? Up high, up high, up high. Right, I think there's a large number of us that need to get onto it. So we'll share the link onto that group 
we'll be having this prayer uh, twice a week. So that's on Mondays and Fridays from 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. This is part of what we believe will stir up the revival that must take place in this house. Amen. How many believe that we need a revival to be able to fill this place? Amen. Amen. How many believe that we need a revival to be able to draw the thousands of souls that need to come into this place? But we cannot do that during the ordinary. So let's tune in every Monday and Friday, 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. I'll start. And then later on, we're going to have a number of uh, leaders that will lead in prayer. Our bishop also will be coming in. Hopefully, he will allow us to have him once a week, every week, to lead us in prayer for two hours in the morning. Amen. And for those of us that usually cheat and set alarms, this is a time now to crank yourself up and to get into prayer. Get involved, get onto the, the, the page, type in as we are praying, and let's pray along together and believe God for the miracle that he's about to manifest in our midst. Amen. How many of us will take part in this? Hey, that's poor. I said, how many are going to take part in this? All Yay. right. So we hope to see you online tomorrow. Arise and shine 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. Let's pray and let's stir up this place for Jesus. Amen. So the link is coming. We will send the link today. Good. Perfect. Time for tithes and offering, ladies and gentlemen. I have envelopes here. I have known being a preacher for years. But if you want to get good offerings, you must more than just give envelopes. So I'm going to ask all of us to stand, please. And I am going to term this offering that we are collecting here. Power for breakthroughs. Stand, 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 stand. There are certain prayers from certain people that work because somehow maybe they walk with God more than others. I'm not so sure. But certainly possibly it's because they have faith. More faith than others. I want you to be help me with your oil here. Thank you. Thank you. Power for breakthroughs. This is your tithes and offerings. If you're carrying your tithes already in an envelope, that's fine. But if, if not, you have an offering to give because you have a need or you have an offering to give because you want something to break loose in your life, please come and join me here. Come and get an envelope. Thank you. Help me, you guys, to distribute. Otherwise, I'll take long here. Thank you. Write on that envelope, power for breakthroughs. I don't know what breakthroughs you need in your life. You only can. <clears throat> power for breakthroughs, Maru. Mm. Whoops. Take two. for you if you're coming move faster so that we can you will notice that churches even genuine churches need money to function so your giving should be directed so that we can do many things that we need to do may God bless you write on that envelope how to break through and ask God to help you to plant a seed that we can move. I do that too. I don't tell people to give offerings and I don't. I don't believe it's right. I must lead in all offerings. Be it building offerings, I must put money. So I've taught myself over years to be a leader in giving. In all churches that I've pastored, I give more than everybody else so that I don't feel like I'm 
collecting money from you and I'm not giving. Yeah, you have written mine. Thank you. So, there you are. That's our tithes and offerings for this week. Can I give you just a few minutes to do that while the choir gives us a song? Yeah. Sister G.U., where is this G.U. today? She's gone. Gone to her babies. Yeah, yeah there's a song. So Pastor Jelly, can I see you there, please, by the corner? Sharon Mube, the white woman, Sharon Mube there, Sharon Svanda too. Can I see you there, please, if you are not in a hurry? Uh, ministers Kudos, can I see you by the corner there? And um, Mr. and Miss Inderume, please, if you see you there, Mr. Mkwai, can I see you there as well? Pastor N. Chirambaguba. And ministers pretty tube. And finally, Mangundu. If I can see you, uh, Fundis Mangundu, 
miss the mango right by that corner. Thank you. After the service. We have Ubaba W. Nika all the way from South Africa. Discipleship Soft. I told you about him. And uh, just to greet us and tell us what to look forward to uh, in May once we secure the dates with him. Thank you, sir. Where's the microphone? Uh, please stand. Thank you. Like we said, he brought his brother here. Their mannerisms are the same, the way they sit and everything else. Please, over to you. My wife introduced us to him, but I met him first time yesterday. And my wife has been using this program that uh, he is uh, a leader of, you are a leader of, of that program for, for now, I think two years, if I'm not wrong, for two years. I like the program. We, we are going to embark on it soon, but let's hear it. Tell us more. I greet your saints this wonderful morning in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I, I, was, I was hoping, when I came in the morning, I honestly sneaked in. That's why I'm sure somebody that was waiting for me couldn't find me. Because I was just hoping to sit at the back and enjoy the service and, uh, and, and, and talk to Bishop after the meeting. So I'm, over, I'm honestly overwhelmed to be here today. Yesterday, when I came through uh, and met Bishop, I can tell you for a fact that there are very few things that overwhelms me in my life. But being in this place yesterday, and even today, I was overwhelmed by the magnitude of this beautiful creation that I see here. And I said to Bishop yesterday, and I'm still going to say it again today, that money doesn't build this something more dear than money does. Can I repeat that again? Money cannot build this. Something more dear than money does. And um, when we walked in this morning, I, 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 I dearly felt the, you know, the love of God overwhelming me. And to you, Bishop, uh, Bishop S who's not here, all the senior reverends, the pastors, the elders, the deacons, everybody who's in the leadership structure of Harvest House. God has given you a great mandate. Not only for Blawayo, but for many, many places that are going to come and fill this place. As Disciples Soft, we are very excited. Our passion are souls as well. And then we come in strongly in the area of administration. How do we ensure that we are going to be able to look after the souls? using technology, because technology is not a fade. Technology causes a lot of impact in our social structures in terms of how people live their lives. So it's really an honor, Bishop, to be here. And um, I, I want to say, you save a mighty God. And I've seen him through his manifestation when I look at the brick upon the brick that I've seen in this place. Glory be to Jesus, amen. Thank you so much, Waunika. It's uh, encouraging to hear you say those kind, warm, and gracious words. May God bless you. Bless your young brother, too. Are you married, young brother? Oh, you're married. So you left the wife behind. Uh, you were checking out the place. <laughs> all right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a joy to have all of you here on a Sunday morning. Do me a favor. Just welcome your neighbor officially. And say, well, come to my church. If you have no other church, make this your church too. I want to preach shortly, just a few minutes, and then we can release you. I took long on the appetizer, being the voice of God. Plus, stand, for, stand up, please. Join me as we stand. And then we go back to our theme. Can you lift up the declarations there? We preach on six topics as Harvest House right through the year. And our churches grow because we are teachers primarily. We are apostolic, we are prophetic, but on Sundays, we take time to teach the word. All right, January, February, we taught, as you can see, different types of anointings. Okay, I wish we had more time there. I could have preached the whole year on the anointing. And then now, March, April, we're dealing with backsliding. March is completing, I think it's Sunday. And then we go into April, still on the same topic. 
we have this very topic that you should miss. Okay, I'll be dealing with end time events. I've written one or two books, but I know it's one big book on the end time events. Do we have it there? Do we have a copy there? End time events. I'm an author of more than 30 books. I have written extensively on the anointing. I've written on backsliding. In fact, I'm teaching from the manuals of this book. And then end time events. Yeah, this is end time anointings. But these are end times, end time events. I've written a book on end time events. I don't think it's there. Maybe it's at the back there. Okay. All right. So this topic is very, very key. Very important for you as a body of Christ to understand where we are in the prophetic calendar of God. And we'll take time to break it down so that as you look at Europe, you see the events happening in Europe, you see the break exit, and you see America, you see Africa, you see the nations of the world, but above all, you see Israel. Watch Israel. When you see things happening in Israel, you know really Israel is a pointer to many things and to the end time events. So I will be teaching prophetically about that. Then we come to our favorite, church planting, growth evangelism, and then the mega church. Why your church should be big. Okay. Churches shouldn't be small at all. Churches should be big, big, big. Like I always say, if I want this church to fill up, I could close a few of my churches and bring them here. But that's not the aim. Our aim is to reach out to the unchurched. There are many people that have not gone to church. That we must reach out. But if we need numbers for the sake of numbers, I have them in the churches there. I just say, close your church. Come here, close your church. Come and join me. Come and join me. And we are all full here. But that will miss the purpose of evangelism. I want you that are here to fill this stretch together with me. I have started many things. I start things and move. Start the... I want us to feel the stretch of feeling this place. Going out in the streets. Okay. Being insulted at times by people. Especially people from this side. They have too much money. So they have no care about you. Mm. Unless they get to know who you are. Say, sorry, I insulted you. I didn't know you were the bishop. Okay. <laughs> so that's what we want. We want to reach to many. Look at these students here from NAST. Hillside Teachers College and all other institutes here. So that's our job here a small HQ a church that in a short space of time we should be filled up I believe this program will help us especially in the area of retention retention is key we are already on fire we know to evangelize we know to bring people but retention is key so that we know that every department has a blessed to has a part to play ushers have a part to play to win souls counselors musicians in fact one time I asked somebody, I took a survey of about what, 27 people, 30 people I was asking each one of them what made you stay in this church? I was hoping they would say it's your preaching, no it was music mm. they said your music is out of this world, I said what else? Number two your ushers <laughs> your ushers, these are mothers your ushers are unbelievable what else? I wanted to know the third thing that caused people to, I came number three. Mm. I'm sure they were very kind. I could, they could have put me number five or number six right down there. But that's the order of things in life. And I'm so excited that our musicians uh, really cause people to come to church and stay in church and so forth. But yeah, I'll preach to you, don't worry. And then after you, musicians are excited about you. I will skunk your head, skunk, skunk, and then you, you will line up. Then make a church. Finally, principles of prosperity and wealth creation. Say amen. Churches must grow. Say amen. All right, thank you. So we are teaching on backsliding. Please take your seats. I will take exactly 20 minutes. Then I release you. We go home. We need to go home. we will catch up with you on Tuesday. We are here on Tuesday. And uh, Baba Chele, you are keeping time. 20 minutes. 20 minutes, Baba Chele. Uh -huh. Do you have, uh, do you have uh, 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 not a stopwatch, a microphone where you say, time up. <laughs>
Get, get a microphone. There is a microphone there. No matter how exciting I may appear or excited, just say time up so that we all want to test it. <laughs> I gave someone whom I shouldn't have given authority. <laughs> they are testing. All right. I want us to read these scriptures quickly. Scripture number one and then number seven, number 12 and number 15 from my manual as introduction. Hebrews 10 verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in them. If anyone draws back. Backsliding sometimes is referred to as drawing back. Serving God, walking with God, you draw back. Give me scripture number seven. Jeremiah 14 verse seven. Write it down. O oh Lord, though our iniquities testify against us, do it for your name's sake. For our backslidings are many. We have sinned against you. Our backslidings are many. We have sinned against you. Scripture number, number 12. Scripture number 12, please. Proverbs 14, verse 14. The backslider in heart will be filled with their own ways, but a good man will be satisfied from above. Backslider is filled with their own ways, but a good man will be satisfied from above. The last scripture, pick scripture number 15 here. Matthew 24, verse 12. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. When your love for God grows cold, you are backslidden. Sometimes you find many backslidden people, not outside, but inside the church. Many are inside the church, and many are in the choir, and many are preaching, holding the microphone. Many are leading prayers. They are backslidden. So we all need, therefore, to be revived. Say amen. amen. Say it again. Say we need to be what? Revived. How did I introduce and define backsliding? Can I give me five definitions? I'm just moving fast here so that I get to today's points here. What did I say about what backsliding is? What is backsliding? It's often called looking back. Looking back. Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. Because you are looking back, you are not walking, looking forward. Once you look back, you are backsliding. Give me the second definition. It's called turning back. Jerusalem has sinned gravely. Therefore, she has become vile. All who honored her despise her because they have seen her nakedness. And she turns away, turning back, turning back turning back. When you're walking with Jesus, you're moving, you decide, I'm going back. That's called backsliding. Give me definition number three. It's called drawing back. Hebrews 10, 38. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone, anyone, anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in them. My soul has no pleasure in the, give me definition number seven, please. Definition number seven. No, number seven. A dissatisfaction with Christ and vilifying both him and his way. You were once on his way, but now you are laughing at other Christians. You are saying, you Christians, you are useless. You Christians, you, are, you don't know what you are doing. And therefore, you have backslidden. You have gone backwards. That's definition number seven. Maybe I could pick definition number nine, please. Definition number nine, just to save time. A mercenary kind of spirit. What are mercenaries? Mercenaries are soldiers of fortune. They don't have a cause to fight. They don't need any cause to fight. If they hear that a nation is fighting another nation and they don't even know the cause, all they ask is, how much will I be paid? How much will I be paid? It is like that when you are a child of God, you come to church 
for blessings only. Bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me. We pastors have made lots of mistakes by telling you more about blessing than sacrifices. Blessing than sacrifices. So if your ways are always, bless me Lord, bless me Lord, once you are required to sacrifice, you go back. Because you don't understand that Christianity is about losing, it is about dying, it is about sacrifice, it is about everything else. Because our master first that. Okay. So if we tell you blessing, 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 it becomes a sweet club that we are giving you. We are not giving you sweets here. We are giving you Jesus Christ. Once you accept him, that's the beginning of your problems. <laughs> the devil will come after you. But guess what? Be of good cheer. He has overcome. You too will overcome in the name of Jesus. So that's a balanced gospel that we must teach you. Not here come to Jesus. All your problems are over. Never. Never. They will not be over. The enemy will pursue you. The enemy will seek to bite you. There will be challenges in your life. The devil will visit you in your room. Demons will seek to attack you. But guess what? First John 4, 4 says, Greater is he that is on the inside of me than all the devils that are on, uh, uh, on the outside. And therefore, I'm able to overcome. Say amen. amen. All right. Today, because I have no time, I need us to go to lesson number four, please. Lesson number four. We are talking now about this facet of backsliding that you must enjoy this morning. What are the consequences of backsliding in heart? What are the results of backsliding in heart? What are they? Pick it up. I'm going to start this forward and then I'll go back on Tuesday. Go backward. Pick it up on point number 19 please. The results of backsliding. Baba Chele, how much time do I have there? You have Eight minutes, Bishop. Eight minutes. I will, I will be all right with eight minutes. Mm. I will be all right, Baba Jed. Number 19, if you are there. All right. The backslider in heart will be full of his own delusions. In other words, when you backslide, you become delusional. In fact, many a times demons enter you. Demons that would have left you, they come back to you. But in a consolidated manner, they go and call their friends and say, hey, the house was once clean, but now, sorry, the once was, house was once occupied, but now there is no one. It's clean. Let's go in there. You'll find that then your state becomes worse than the earlier state. You begin to enter into all these things that I mentioned there. Spiritism. Spiritism, if you move up, please. Mammonism. Universalism. And all other isms that begin to dominate your life. You once believed in Christ. Now you are beginning to believe in all these demonic entities. They have entered your life. I love my grandparents. I love my parents. They died. They have no power now to bless me. No. They had power to bless me when they lived. When you begin to worship ancestors, the dead... You are opening your life to demonic attacks. Because the dead can't be worshipped. You can't talk to the dead. You will never talk to the dead. They will never give you solutions once they are dead. Respect them. Love them. Honor them. But don't worship them. Don't seek for guidance in your life. I teach a lot on demons. A lot. That when you begin to worship the dead, be it your parents, familiar spirits can come in. Spirits that are familiar to what you know. And they come in and pretend to be your parent or your grandparent and speak into your life and your life will be jinxed. You will be messed up the rest of your life. Parents love us. Yes, they did. They care for us. Yes, they do. They cared for us while they lived. But they cannot direct our lives now. They are dead. Once I'm dead and gone, don't come to my grave to come and speak to me. I will not speak to you. <laughs> No one can speak to you except demons that then become familiar with your conditions and speak into your life. Number 20. The backslider in heart will be full of his own bondage. Bondage. He is in bondage. Your conscience is in bondage. Everything is in bondage. You were once free. The son of man set you free. 
But now you went to demonic or you went to the past. And demons came in and bound you. You are like the men from the Gadarenes. Thousand demons fill you up now because you have gone back. Whatever you do, don't go back. Tell your neighbor, whatever you do, don't go back. Don't go back. Number 21. The backslider in his in heart will be full of his own condemnation. When now you have left the Lord completely, you are condemned. Okay, condemnation comes from many, many sources. You begin to condemn yourself. If you read the Bible, the Bible somehow seems to condemn you because it talks about your status quo. If you don't read the Bible, again, you feel condemned. If you go to church, you feel condemned because the preacher may be touching on the very things that you are doing. So you are condemned left, right, and center. And therefore, the solution is don't backslide. Touch your neighbor's shoulder and say, Unga wimzalwane. Don't backslide. Number three, religious indifference. Number 22, religious indifference. Matthew 24, verse 12. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. How many love drinking warm tea here? Warm tea. Lift up your hand. Just warm tea. You love warm tea. Hot tea. Warm tea is crude to many people, except to few crazy people. But generally speaking, many people don't want to drink cold tea. Yeah, because it's not nice. When you are cold, the Lord Jesus says, I will spew you out of my mouth. Because you are lukewarm. I would rather that you are hot or you are completely cold, but not in between. Backsliding is finding yourself in between. You are neither good to the devil, neither are you good to God. Even the devil says, ah, But even God says, this one is not mine. Yeah? The devil says, it's not mine. You are found somewhere in the middle. You don't belong anywhere. So you would rather serve God and serve him with all your heart. Say amen. amen. Number 23. Number 23. Unfit for the kingdom of God. Listen to what the Bible says. In the book of Luke 9, verse 62, it says, But Jesus said to him, No one having put his hand to the plow and looking back, looking back, looking back, you are plowing, looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Once you accept Christ, live by him, die by him, live by him, die by him. You are not trying church. You are not trying Jesus Christ. You are coming to him as your savior. You live by him and you die by him. Say amen. amen. Amos 6 verse 1 will read. Woe to you that are at ease in Zion. That are just relaxing. Many Christians love relaxing in the house of God. The house of God is not for relaxation. It is to train soldiers to go outside and win souls. Say amen. Say I'm a soldier of the Lord. Say it again. Say I'm a soldier of the Lord. Yeah. Here we train people and send them away. That's why we plant many churches. We have over 800 churches globally. Why? Because when you sit like this, you are listening. And you are listening and you are learning. You will grow. When you grow, we send you out. I want to send a few young people to Afghanistan and Sudan. And be there. And leave ladies to go to Paris. And to go to England. And to go to New York and Miami and so forth. But all young people. Go to where grenades are blowing. So that you live for Christ. Uh -huh. We live for Christ. Because it's very important that we all understand. That the calling of God. Is a powerful thing upon our lives. Uh, number 24. Loss of spiritual enthusiasm. Uh -huh. When now we are backslidden for good, enthusiasm dies. You are no longer excited for God. Yeah, you begin to look at others. When you see others saying, Amen, Hallelujah, standing up, you think, Ah, these are fanatics. Mm -hmm. One man said to me, a man in Harare from another church, he says, Bishop, why are you so passionate about God? And I see that your people are also passionate. I said, because you are lukewarm, that's why. That's why you consider what I'm doing passionate. This is just the life in me that is the life of God that causes me to be passionate. Once you begin to look at others and say, oh, they're too, too extreme. Something 
is beginning to happen in your life that is not good. Revelation 2, 4. Nevertheless, I have this against you that you have lost your first love. Your first love. How many remember falling in love many years ago? Many, many years ago. Lift up your hand. If ever you ever fell, fell in love. How? How many years fall in love? You don't know. Mama fear. You can't remember. When this man coined the phrase and said, I love you, baby. And you, you, you lost appetite. Mm, first love. First love is key. Even our first love in God. We must maintain that. We must love God over time and over years. One man met me and said, Bishop, you were born again in 1977. You are still loving God. Yeah, I maintain my first love. Maintain your first love in the name of Jesus Christ. Nowadays, this generation, you love God one week, the following week you are tired, you don't want to come to church, you want to give up, because after one week you are so tired. I'm so t I've never seen a generation as tired as this generation. They do nothing, they're tired. Ah, Bishop, I was tired. That's why, what were you doing? I was tired of sleeping, so I got tired. I didn't want to wake up. I was tired of being tired. And everybody is tired. Once you deal with that demon of tiredness, God is going to use you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Stand up and rise up. Stand. We're about to go. Stand. How many minutes in food is one? Five minutes. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. 25. Point number 25. Stand up. Yeah. Five minutes. It's not me who lied. It's Jale who lied. Divine displeasure. Divine displeasure. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure. If a human being has no pleasure in you, you can always find another human being and they will find pleasure in you. Yeah. But if your displeasure is from God, you are in trouble, my friend. Because wherever you go, things turn against you. Make sure God doesn't put you on this list of people whom he calls, I have divine displeasure of you. You are in trouble. When God says, you don't please me anymore. And therefore, I'm turning my face away from you. And you are on your own when God turns his face away from you. Number 26. Number 26. Number two. No one gains by backsliding. You backsliding. And the answer is, well, 27. The church loses a member. <laughs> when you backslide, we lose a member. A very crucial member. Who could have changed someone's life? So we lose that member. So we say, point number 26, no one gains. 27, no one gains, but the church loses a member. 28, 28, the Lord loses a servant. Mm -hmm. The servant decides, you know what, let me go back. And the church loses, I say, the Lord loses a servant. 29, the brethren lose a brother or a sister. Or a potential spouse. I told you last week that the church is everything. Your husband or wife is in the church. So when you backslide, someone who could have married you has lost. You have gone. Yeah. Stay in the church. Tell your neighbor, stay in the church. Yeah, say it again. Say, stay in the church. If you are to die, die in the church. Die in the church. I will bury you here. I'm here to bury you. <laughs> I have buried many, but I will bury you too. <laughs> and say, our brother is going to be with the Lord. Die in the church. Don't die in a shop in somewhere. Don't die in a disco. If you are to die, pass through church. Give us reason to preach the word at your death. To say, Liambonum Salonuetulo. Wedding Mweba with Kivangel. Sifuna Lan Liben Jengai. So die in church. Number. 30. The community loses Christian influence. A person would have influenced a community and now is backslidden. Number 31. The backslider loses his soul. So there is losing everywhere. The backslider loses his soul. Jeremiah 3 verse 14. Return, O backsliding children, says the Lord, for I am married to you. God says he's forever married to a backslider. What does that mean? That he never gives up on you. It is you intentionally, willingly, that decides I'm leaving Christianity. I'm going. I'm going. But he says, I am forever looking out for a backslider. The prodigal son syndrome. Remember? Yeah. Father looking out 
looking out for his son. Looking out. 32. Your backsliding makes you a dangerous person to be around. I'll show you why. I'm closing with this. Dangerous person to be around. If your friend is a backslider, you are in danger yourself. I was once in Swaziland, running away from the call of God. I was tired of the call of God. Tired. I said, Lord, I'm leaving. I'm running away. God says, stay. I said, no. Some few prophets come in and say, you are supposed to be where you are. Don't leave. I said, I'm tired. My friends have left. I'm going. I'm going. I'm a professional man. I'm an accountant. I'm going to get a job. I left. I went to Harare, picked, picked Royal Swazi and flew over Harare across the bar. I was sitting by the window. I was saying to myself, goodbye, goodbye. I'm gone. I told my wife, I'm coming back to fetch you. I'll get a job quickly, come back to fetch you. And within days, I got a job. Babani, Ford Motors, upstairs. As an accountant, I got the job. I began to work one hour. One hour. I have heard the voice of God audibly three times. This was one of the times. The voice said, leave! As louder than this. I heard it and I turned around. No one heard the voice except me. I looked around. I shivered. It is a voice that you don't want to hear again. Even your toes feel it. Your hair feel it. Your nchompiza feels it. Everything about it feels it. Leave! I shivered. And I feared. I knew if I stayed one more day, I was going to be in trouble. Imagine being my friend in that place and I decide I'm not going and you remain my friend calamity after calamity Jonah syndrome Jonah was running away he was a backslidden man guess what he was running away from the call of God like I was and everything began to go haywire even the ship was sinking they were going to die not because God wanted to kill them but because they were in the company of a backslider. Uh -huh. Whenever you are in the company of a backslider, every calamity is your portion. They had to find Jonah. Jonah said, throw me outside. They tried to walk with what we call unsanctified mercy. They said, no, 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 Jonah, let's, let's try. Let's offload the luggage. Maybe the luggage. The ship continued to want to sink until they said, you know what? Let's throw the dude under. Let's throw the dude under. But can you imagine your husband is a man like that? He ran away long back from God. And you, sweet wife, you are married to that person. And you say, let's go to church. He says, no, I'm not interested in church now. I have found a new way. Mm. I party on Sunday. Let's go and party. You are going down, he's going down. Whenever a man goes down, the wife goes down. Whenever a man goes up, the wife goes up. Hallelujah. So be far away from a backslider. They ended up throwing Jonah for the waves to subside. Otherwise, they were all in danger. You see, when the backslider storm finally comes, it hits everybody. Family, children, co-workers, friends, even enemies around you sink because you are backsliding. Stay afloat. Hallelujah. Mm. Look at your neighbor. Are you backsliding? Send the Ubalege like this. Hands are Ubalege. I'm going to my extent. I ain't saying I'm going to pack at Gulochona. But then I'm going to go to Gulochona. We are going to go to the call. Then I'm going to go to the call. I'm going to go to the call. I'm going it is God looking for this man and saying, I will kill you. You are running away from me. Laos ubu ya sui katile ya ni pasi. Go. If it is a little book. Ucho nu pagati. Go manu karubu usu kulung kulunga katu chofu kuti. Kulo chona lapa hini ube kula chona. Even when you sit in church next to a chona, you better ask. Ask now your neighbor and say, Uchona wena kumba usu chona. Moreover, if you attend church and the person next to you is a Jonah, they will feel to go to the loo seven times. 
How many know that it's disturbing to go to the loo seven times? Yeah. When you're trying to write it, not to move it, you assume, just say to it. I'm going to look at the figure of the words. I'm nothing comes out. I will say, since there's parts, the blood against full, Jonah goes again. Nothing comes out. I will tell you seven times. It is Jonah messing you up. <laughs> what if you are jolling out with Jonah? Hey! What if Jonah is your boyfriend? <laughs> Jonana. <laughs> You'll be calling him Jonana first time. Hello, Jonana. Oh, Jonana, you're in Kaza. Oh, Jonana, you're in Kisa. Oh, I'm like, you're in Kena, you're in Fiyah, you're in Penta. Oh, Jonana. Until Jonana, God is looking for him. Wherever you are with Jonana, you're in trouble. In your year, you're telling me, you're in the end, you're in the end. Here, we delivered some tiles last week. Tiles last week. We had ordered them from a big warehouse there. As they offloaded, a snake jumped out. Oh my God. Ah. <laughs> Wanted to bite someone from a warehouse in town, right here by your foyer. So we picked up a snake there. That was after a Jonah there, and our guys picked it up. <laughs> Once you are backsliding, you are a time bomb. Everything is blowing apart around you. Watch out for a man who's backsliding. Watch out for a woman who's backsliding. Watch out because everything is sinking sand around them. Be careful. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are going home. Lift up your hands and say, Lord Jesus, thank you for this day that you have made. In it, I will rejoice. In Jesus' name. Put your hands together today like you've had a short sermon here. In the name of Jesus. May those that are watching us by via social media be blessed to make sure you stay after God. Pursue God with all your heart, with all your might. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Goodbye. We'll see you Tuesday. Let's meet 5.30 here Tuesday. The names that I mentioned, be there. The scripture that we are reading before we leave. One, two, and three. May Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times more numerous than you are and bless you as he has promised you. We'll catch up with you. See you. Thank you. I'm Biden Kai. I know you have food to eat. Go home. I called some people. Let's meet there.